Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov representing Mercari US and today I'm trying to show a solution to the Test Bash 2022 UI Automation Challenge. The challenge is to test this website automationtesting.online by filling out the form, submitting it and then going to the admin panel and checking that the message is there. I'm gonna use Cypress, so let's roll! Test Bash Initialize the new project. Okay, so right now I have nothing. I'm gonna install Cypress as a dev dependency and I'll install Prettier because I don't wanna format my code myself. Okay, I'm gonna copy Prettier settings files from another file of mine, Cypress. Open is the command to start Cypress locally. Okay, so I'm using version 10.8. And I'm gonna do end-to-end -end testing because this is an external website that I didn't create. I don't have a source code. It will scaffold a couple of files for me and I will use Electron Browser for testing. Okay, so right now I have no spec files. So before I add the first spec file, I'm gonna go to the Cypress config file. I don't need anything. The only thing I really need is the base URL. That's where the application is running. So copy this URL. I don't want to hard code it. Okay, so I'll create a folder for my end-to-end -end test and I'll create my spec file. And I say it sends a message. Cypress uses the mocha syntax, so I can use it and so on. And you can see the spec in Cypress. And right now it does nothing because I have no tests whatsoever. I mean, no commands, so I need site visit to visit the base URL. Perfect, we can see the website right here. It's a little bit too short. We're using 660 pixels by default, so let's make the page slightly bigger or taller, I should say. Let's say 1200. I think this is slightly better. Okay, now we can see more of a page. So we want to type something in this field. So we can look at the dev tools to discover what's the markup. We can use the test IDs or ARIA labels or even IDs. And to make it just slightly simpler, I'm going to use this selector playground, hover over element. Notice it gives me the command. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it right here. Now, I don't want to hard code anything, so I'll say username is test sci user, and so here we'll type username. Okay, we can do the same thing for email, type email, phone, type phone, and from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Okay, subject. Now, this is a shared system, so we don't reset the data. So for subject, I want to make sure that my message stands out. So I'll say test subject here, and I will use low dash, that's bundled with Cypress, to give it a random number from 1 to 10,000. Okay. And the final thing is the description, and I'll type and let's just repeat something several times. So I'll repeat the string message body, let's say six times. Okay, let's see how it works. Notice that uh, Cypress reruns the tests by watching the files. And if I save a file, okay, this looks reasonable. Only I need a space after the message body. And then what do we do? Well, we have to click the submit button. So let's find it, copy it, and we don't need this. And we'll click on the submit button. Okay, so our test goes to the website, fills the field, submits it. And maybe we want to say that this message should be visible, right? Just to confirm that the form was submitted. So we'll say contains and this message. Although this message includes part of our username. So we'll say username. Okay, 
So my username was visible. We can see what we clicked. We can hover over each field and see how our test filled it out. So what do we do next? Well, we have to go to the admin panel. And notice that admin panel is on the same website, just slightly different URL. Okay, we don't need this. Okay, so we're gonna visit slash pound slash. Okay, let's reload. Uh, clicking and opening the second browser tab broke the test a little bit. No big deal. Okay, let's see what it does now. Okay, so right now we are here at the admin page. So we need to enter admin, type admin, and we need to enter the password, type password. And we wanna hide it so it's not reflected right here when we type, because we wanna keep a secret. And we'll say log false. Okay, types it, goes to the next page, and now notice but our application actually rejects a promise. Cypress automatically fails the test if your application is throwing an error or rejects a promise and doesn't handle it. Luckily, we can ignore it just for now. In reality, we should fix our application. We can say on and we give it a function and we'll turn false, meaning don't fail the test. In reality, you can inspect the error message and decide if you should fail the test or not. Okay, so it seems like we are right here, we're entering things. And right before we click, right, I wanna do one more thing. I don't wanna hard code admin and the password. So what I will do, I'll go back to my config and I'll say, okay, here's an object with username and it's admin and the password, okay. And again, we can pass this as environment variables even to avoid it hard coding it here and we can get it in our test by using static method cypress env. And this is how we avoid um, hard coding uh, sensitive information in our specs. Okay, goes and fills and notice doesn't even show the password what we type. And now we just have to click on the submit button and we should be logged in as admin and read the messages. Okay, we can see that we are right here. So why don't we confirm that we are on the management page by saying contains this text string and it should be visible. By default, all Cypress querying commands like contains, get, we just check the existing element, but we want to make it slightly stronger. We want to say it's not just visible, it's also visible. I mean, it doesn't just exist, but visible by the user. Okay, let's see if what's this message. Okay, we can see this, this is just a link. Okay, it doesn't give us a good selector yet, so we have to inspect. I mean, this is real browser, so we can do everything. Okay, we see it's a navigation link, so we'll say contains an anchor with class nav link. Actually, this is a get, because we don't have a text and we'll say, and it has an attribute href pointing at pound admin messages, and we'll click on it. And what happens when we click on it? Well, it goes to that URL, so let's confirm it. Location gives you a big object, we're not interested in the entire object, so I think we're just interested in hash part, and it should equal I think this is what we expect it to be once we transition after logging in. Again, we're running the whole test from scratch because Cypress resets all the cookies, everything. Okay, doesn't find this element because we forgot to finish quote, a close quote. Perfect. So now we can see all the messages and uh, we remove this and it should be fine. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we see several messages. Notice there are a couple messages from us and one built in. So let's look at the markup right here. Okay, so we can see that every row with a message has row detail and messages that we unread have a class red false. 
So we can confirm it's by using sci get, which can return multiple elements, that there is a row detail and there is at least one. Should have length greater than zero. And then we can find our message, right? And because we used a random ID in the subject, we can say contains subject. Okay? And by default, it's unread. So we'll say should have class read false. Okay, fills the form again, goes to the admin page and checks that it contains text. Okay, so what happened here? It failed because if you look at what it found contains, right? It found the smallest element with the text, but we don't want the smallest, we want the whole row. So what we have to do, we'll say contains row detail with the text. So that will find the whole row. So once we found it, we have to click on it and it brings the actual message. So we're gonna click on it. Notice uh, Cypress uses this Fluent API, similar to jQuery. We keep drilling into the element and working it. Once the message opens up, let's see how we can find it. Okay, so hover over this. So it seems like it's a model, it has a class. Okay, so we'll say, okay, a model pops up and it has a message. Okay, fine. So we'll say after we click, then there is a model class should be visible. And now we want to check several things inside of it. So we'll say that model should be visible and include text and the text is username and it should also include text subject and uh, what else phone and what was the last one message body okay let's just say message body okay entering submitting checking a message perfect that model contains all those strings. Now we just need to close it. So we'll find inside this element, it's just a button, no selectors. So we'll find it as uh, using contains button with text close and we'll click on it. And after we click, that model should no longer exist. Okay. Now, once we close, this message becomes red, All right? So what's the markup or what's the change right there? Okay, it seems like it changes the class from read false to read true. So we'll find right here that message uh, that we just posted, okay? And it should now have class red true and not have class red false. So it really adds a new class and removes the old class. Okay, does it work? Yes. So the test runs very quickly, five seconds. We can use the time travel and debugger to kind of see how everything progressed through the test. And I know it's a lot, but, you know, writing Cypress tests is fun. The only other thing that I want to point out here is that this application it resets the backend every 10 minutes right here. So sometimes in the middle of our test, the messages might be gone, it might be inaccessible, which would lead to flake. So one last touch I will enable for this particular test, retries. And I'll say, okay, if the test fails for whatever reason, retry it up to two times. And, you know, if it fails the first time or second time and succeeds on the third, it's still okay, it's a passing test, but Cypress will mark it as a flaky test. So you know to investigate it further. So hope you had fun. I know I did. If you have any questions, I'm Gleb Bakhmutev and happy testing.